Hi and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today we're going to talk about binary search. This is a very simple yet very powerful technique to search through sorted arrays. And this is a so-called divide and conquer algorithm. But before I'm going to explain to you how binary search works and what divide and conquer actually means, so actually a little computer science class today, I'm going to show you what kind of a problem we can actually solve with binary search. And for this tutorial, I have created this playground that already has a function in it that we've created in my last tutorial on Swift generics. There we have explored how to actually use these generics and these parameters in detail. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, you can do so now. It's completely free and you will always get notified about the newest tutorials. But just to go through that real quickly and see what kind of problem we are solving here, I like to mention that we have two arrays right here. We have an integer array and we have a string array. And sometimes it is very useful if you can find out the index of an element in an array. Let's say we're talking about an address book, for example, then you can have large amounts of entries in your array and they're already sorted. So for the binary search, it is very important that the array that we're working with is already sorted. Like in the case that we've right here, we have this integer array with the sorted numbers and we have the string array also with these sorted letters. And this linear search now does one very simple thing. It iterates through the the array and we are checking each element if it is equal to the key that we are looking for, the search term that we are looking for. In this case, if we're calling this function linear search, then we can enter an array, let's say the ABC array, as an array and as a search key, I'm looking for the letter G. And if we run this code, then we will get the information that this is actually the element six. So it has the index six in our array. And now if you have a look at the console at the bottom, we're having a number of linear iterations here of six. This means that we have iterated through all the objects in our array to actually get to this point where we know that our element is indeed at position six or at index six in our array. And this is not very efficient. And here comes binary search into play. And we're going to write an algorithm now, a divide and conquer algorithm that is going to simplify this whole process and reducing the number of iterations required to find an element. And when we're talking about things like that in computer science, then we're talking about time complexity and the so-called big O notation. The time complexity is the computational complexity that describes the amount of time it takes to run an algorithm. And we're using this so-called big O notation to actually classify algorithms according to how their running time or space requirements grow as the input size grows. You're going to see that in a second. So I have created a little graph here um, that illustrates the input size and the number of operations required. The linear graph here is actually showing our linear search with a big O of N. So we're using this big O notation to describe that we indeed have a proportional growth here. And each element that we put into our array, for example, also results in an operation that we have to perform. And if you're looking at this graph, then you can see that as the input size grows, also our number of operations grow. And this means that if you have a lot of elements in your array, for example, it also takes quite a bit of time to actually perform a task like searching for an object using this linear search approach. So how can we actually get a better curve? And you maybe already see this curve at the bottom of um, this chart, and it's actually barely visible, but this is what describes our binary search with a big O of log N. And such an algorithm with this complexity is considered highly efficient because the ratio of the number of operations to the size of the input decreases and tends to zero when the number of inputs increases. So this is what we are trying to achieve. We want to have an algorithm with the 
complexity of big O of log n. And hopefully, if you haven't been familiar with time complexity, then you can do something with this knowledge in the future, because even the documentation about simple functions such as the remove at index function, if you want to remove an element from an array at a specific index, gives you an information about the complexity of this function and it's given at big O of n, which means that you should be cautious if you have really quite a huge number of elements in your array. But now let's get back to our initial question. What is actually a divide and conquer algorithm in our binary search or why is binary search such a divide and conquer algorithm? So we have our problem. You've seen it already. We want to search through an array and we want to find the index of a given element. So if we're doing a divide and conquer approach, then what we're doing is we try to actually create subproblems of our huge problem, which is the actual divide part. And then what we try to do is to actually solve these subproblems. And the cool thing is that this solve the problem is actually the conquer way, um, because solving these subproblems should be a little simpler than the huge problem that we had at the beginning. And then at the end, we try to combine all the solutions of these problems and then get the solution to our huge problem. So a divide and conquer algorithm works by actually recursively breaking down a problem into two or more subproblems of the same or related type. And until these become simple enough to be solved directly, and the solutions to the subproblems are then combined to give a solution to the original problem. And this is what divide and conquer algorithms do. And now let's apply this to our binary search example. And let's say we have our array here with these letters and we want to find the letter N. So with this divide and conquer approach and binary search, what we do in the first step is we inspect the element in the middle of the array. We check if it is greater than, less than, or equal to the value that we're searching for. And if this value now um, is equal to what we are looking for, we're just done. And we just took, it just took one step. But in most cases, it isn't as easy as that. So if the middle value is less than our search value, we narrow down our search to the last half of the array. And if the middle value is greater than our search value, we narrow down the search down to the first half of the array. And then we repeat these steps until we either found what we were looking for or the array cannot be split any further, which means the search value could not be found. And this is what we're going to do now in code. And now back in our playground, we're actually going to do the same thing that we just did in the presentation. We're going to perform our binary search and therefore I'm going to add a new function calling it binary search in the same way as I did with the linear search uh, being a generic function. We're using the T as a generic type using an array with generic objects right here. Um, and also let's use a search key with a generic type and we want to return a simple integer as the index of the element that we have found in our array. And then we also return nil here to actually satisfy our compiler here and to not get any warnings. And now the first thing that we need to do is define a range. Since we're changing this range, as you've seen in the presentation, we're continuously changing the range that we're actually inspecting in our array. So first of all, we have a range um, and we're looking through the complete array. So we're also looking from the index zero to the last element using our array and its count to get all the elements and with that getting the range of the complete array. And then what we do is we're defining a while loop with a simple condition which is range and its start index to range of end index. So while our start index is less than the end index, we need to perform our search. And therefore, we're defining now our code block here for our while loop. And we try to first of all, get the midpoint of our array. Therefore, we perform a very simple operation creating a uh, midpoint constant here using the start index and then just adding uh, the half of the complete range that we have 
Um, so just using range and the end index and subtracting the range and the start index uh, to actually get the number and then divide that by two so that we have the half of this range and then adding this to our start index and with that we have our midpoint. And now what we need to do is having a look as we did in the presentation, we need to have a look at this midpoint in our array to actually see if this is the key that we are or the search key that we are looking for. So if our array and its midpoint index is equal to our search key, then this is the moment where we are actually done and we can return our midpoint as the index of the element that we were looking for. Okay, but now this was the easy part. Now let's see what is with the other conditions because our array and its midpoint could also be less than the search key. In that case, we are looking for, and so if the middle um, the middle value, the midpoint, is less than the key, then we are looking at the right half. So we have to adjust our range. And therefore we're using the midpoint, we add one, and defining our range now again to the end index. And with that, we are looking for the next element from the midpoint to the end of our array. And then there is the last case that we need to check for. If the mid value is greater than the key, then we look at the left half. So we're using our range, change it to zero from zero to the midpoint. And since we're iterating through this uh, through this whole process as long as the start index is less than the end index and we're exiting the loop by actually returning our midpoint, we're actually already done with this whole algorithm. And now let's see how it actually works and how what you've seen in theory actually looks like now with our um, algorithm in Swift. So I'm now looking for the last letter in our array and this would be the letter G and it is at the index 6. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And with our linear search, if we perform it that way, and let's just run that right here, then we're getting the 6, the index 6, that's absolutely correct. But now um, we also want to figure out uh, how many iterations we actually need with our binary search. But before we do that, let's just call binary search using the ABC array and also use the search key G. And let's see if we get the same result. And we do. And now to actually have a look at the number of iterations, what I'd like to do is just define a iterations variable here on top of my function right before our while loop. And each time we iterate through our uh, while loop, I'm going to increment the iterations variable here, just uh, like that. And then right before we exit the function, I'm going to um, call this print statement and use binary iterations and use string interpolation here with the iterations variable. And now when we run this again, we can see um, in the console below how many iterations it took to actually find our value. And here we have this huge difference with the linear search, we needed six iterations and with the binary search, just two. Isn't that wonderful? We have such a great optimization here from our linear search to our binary search. It's just great how much we could optimize this simple process. And I hope you enjoyed this little um, very theoretical tutorial. Let me know it in the comments below. Also give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it already to not miss any future tutorials. I thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.